I am talking to Aaron Angert, and he is a friend of mine, and he is an artificial intelligence researcher, and he's also interested in Bitcoin. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about your your research, just so that uh, people know that that's not uh, BS. Sure. So um, I'm currently doing research at uh, Texas A&M, and um, I'm working on computer vision uh, research, specifically on improving the SIFT algorithm, which is a scale invariant feature transform. So, not quite related to Bitcoin there, but uh, a different uh, sort of research in computer vision and AI. Yeah. And so, what are you what are you currently up to right now in Bitcoin? Well, um, right now I'm working on this wallet called Telescope, which is a Bitcoin Cash wallet for the browser. So the idea is you can send and receive Bitcoin Cash online just by clicking Bitcoin links or Bitcoin addresses and you can just send it in the browser. So it's kind of like a side hobby or a side project, I suppose. And uh, before we get to our main topic, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin Cash because you got excited about Bitcoin Cash when that started happening. So can you say what 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 do you think is more interesting about Bitcoin Cash? Right. So basically after the split happened, I think it was in August, um, I just think there was a lot more potential in Bitcoin Cash. It's also something that attracts uh, attracts people to uh, to get involved. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things. For me, when I was actually deciding to build the the wallet, you know, you have to pick one of the cryptos out there. And for me, Bitcoin Cash, looking at it, is something that I feel has more longevity, basically. It's something that's going to stick around for a lot longer. It's not going to be something that's going to, you know, that people are going to leave from. So, basically, it is more of like an investment decision, you know. If I'm going to build something on top of a crypto, you have to think into the future and say, well, what's going to be around there in 5, 10 years from now? And Bitcoin Cash, at least, to me, looked like the most promising. Yeah, and it was certainly encouraging to me when when I learned that you started working on this wallet because uh, before you had a you had a casual interest in in Bitcoin, and it's interesting, right? It kind of was stalled out, and then the fork happened, and all of a sudden, you know, projects are popping up all over the place, uh, just one after another. Yeah, and to to me, attracting new projects is more more meaningful than uh, you know than, than what what you what you could say about the leaders themselves right to, to me the to me if you're attracting lots of creative people it, it doesn't matter so much who who the leaders are you know that's that's what really matters right yeah definitely there's a lot of people that are very interested in, in Bitcoin cash and you know that community I think is breeding kind of this innovation on top of the platform as well. Sure, and so I, I think that in, in BTC, the idea is kind of that there are a few people who decide everything for everybody else, and everybody else is kind of uh, passively going along with it. But but a really, a, a, good, a good community is one where many creative people can uh, interact with, with one another well, easily. I, I think another interesting point is that BTC right now has a <clears throat> and like an innovation bottleneck. All of the excitement for Bitcoin Core or BTC is kind of focused on the Lightning Network right now. So if you're wanting to do something very innovative on BTC, well, it's going to be Lightning Network related. You're, you're going to do the Lightning Network. While on Bitcoin Cash, it's, okay, we've gotten past the scaling problem, what can we do with the entire platform itself? Sure, and I, I really like the term you just used, the uh, innovation bottleneck. And uh, previously I've, I've compared uh, uh, BTC to sort of like a, a socialist, centrally planned <laughs> economy. Because that's the problem with socialism, is that there is an innovation bottleneck. And I don't, I don't think that BTC is you know, literally the Soviet Union or, or, or something. But, right. But they, they have they have an innovation bottleneck, which is what, what you have when you have 
central planners. Right. So I think um, at least one of the most innovative things that recently I saw on BTC was uh, Satoshi's place, which was kind of like the million dollar homepage. But again, this is, look at the lightning network here. We're trying to implement in this way. While on Bitcoin Cash, um, you don't you don't have that. You have a coin funder, a coin tax. You got uh, the telescope wall that I'm working on, um, Joystream. There's just a, a ton more things that, that aren't saying, look at this technology. It's more of, look at what we can do with Bitcoin Cash and just there's a million use cases for it. Yeah, and and many it is it is easy for for creative people to uh to work on their projects without having to coordinate uh too much yeah. with one another. I think that's another really good point actually that the barrier to entry for working on Bitcoin Cash is much lower <clears throat> than BTC at least uh in terms of the Lightning network, right? If you want to build on the base layer for BTC, that's about as simple as working on for BCH as well. But if you want to do the Lightning Network, there's all this extra work involved in getting it up and running, um, the routing issues that they have, uh, for instance. So it's kind of like an innovation barrier to entry as well. It's not just a, a bottleneck in, in the sense of working on the Lightning Network only. If you want to work on that, there's just all these extra things you have to do as well. And then on Bitcoin Cash, it's just, it's the same as it's always been. It's very easy to get set up and just get your projects out there and start developing. Yeah, and well, anyway, good good luck on uh, your project, <laughs> uh, Telescope. And it, Thank you. It's in its early stages now, but if I uh, know if I know you, it, it's going to turn into something something really great if, if you can keep, keep <laughs> finding keep finding the time to put into it. Yeah, I I, I really hope it turns out very well. <laughs> Um, so, um, you have appeared on my show once before, so, uh, do you mind if we talk about that a little bit? Uh, sure, go ahead. So, you, you are actually Skeppa the Fox, and I talked about you in my, my Narnia episode, because, uh, you, uh, you, you, you said something that, uh, brought, brought me back to reality, uh, a little bit, so I, I mentioned that on an earlier <laughs> episode. So now, when I what I said about you on on that episode is that you are not uh, you're not you're not in in the madness, but uh, now you are. Uh, Maybe I've crept into yeah, you're, the, you're being, the Bitcoin world a little bit more. <laughs> you're being drawn deeper into the, the madness. So now on to uh, our main topic, which is expanding bubbles. So uh, can can you uh, talk a little bit about what about expanding bubbles? So I think the idea that we had previously was that um, it was something that expanding bubbles were kind of like um, the ideas. And if your idea was more competitive, then it starts to, you know, grow and take over the brain. So I think there was an idea with kind of religion a little bit. So if that idea is powerful enough, it starts to overtake the brain in a way. It starts to kind of reach down into every aspect of, of your life, right? Yeah. And maybe the idea is that different forms of um, different ideas, not just religion, but, you know, currency or, um, oh, everyone in my country speaks English, so that's the norm, or just these overarching ideas about society and the world start to kind of... Um, go into all the other aspects of your life of your brain it just uh, expands outwards basically let's talk about let's talk about physics for a little bit <laughs> because um, we're not talking about a, uh, a, a like a soap bubble right um, but you, you can have a, uh, a substance that is um, a, what's called a, a supercritical state what, what that means is that can go, it can change phase to go into a lower energy state. So it's like the material would prefer to be in a different state, but um, there there may need to be some kind of a symmetry breaking uh, seed yeah. th th through th uh, around which the new phase can, can expand. So I think 
this is similar to um, like a pot of water, basically. So yeah. if you turn up the heat, you you know you have um, liquid, but then there's kind of suddenly a phase shift into bubbling or boiling. Okay, but I, I actually think a, a better better analogy is if you cool the temperature, because uh, you you can keep the water below freezing, mm -hmm. but if if it is in motion and there are no seed crystals, then it, it doesn't turn solid. It doesn't shift, right. So, but if you put a seed crystal in, then the the rest of the water can rapidly change phase to ice because it can, uh, um, the, uh, the, um, the, the, the molecules can, can fall into place around the seed crystal. So as long as the environment is in the correct position, introducing one element might cause a dramatic shift yeah. towards another position. Yeah, and in, in the case of water, the, the reason it can be in, in the supercritical state is that the, uh, the crystalline form breaks, breaks the, the symmetry of uh, ordinary space. Because the, the crystal is, uh, it, it has um, um, a, a directionality to it. The, the, the molecules all need to be in a certain orientation with, with one another. And if there there isn't uh, there isn't anything to break the the symmetry, then uh, then it's it's more difficult for uh, for the phase change to to take place. That's great. So uh, uh, when when the universe got started um, during the uh, the inflationary phase uh, of of the universe, the, the the universe was more symmetric than. Than really? it is now. Yeah, and it, um, it was uh, symmetric under the the full uh, Lorenz transformation uh, group. Um, like group. actually, sym more symmetrical. Right. So that means you can boost to a different velocity relative to what you had before, and the universe looks the same. And today, the universe is not like boost, that. like go. Go in time? No, time? just that just means uh, change change your velocity. Oh, and it looks similar to the way it does. Okay. Yeah, but at some point a, a, there was a, a seed of uh, the current universe that uh, that appeared for some reason, and the 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 uh, the modern was this? Are you saying this is before the Big Bang or after? This is after the Big Bang. After the Big Bang. <laughs> Eventually, there was a, a seed of ordinary universe that got started, and it expanded at the speed of light. And it's it's just it's just like the situation with the the water and uh, the ice the ice crystal. Mm -hmm. So the the prior universe would have been empty, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but because all of this energy was released when the um, when the 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 new um, the new the new vacuum evolved, it was, it was filled filled with particles. That's they were formed from uh, this. from the release of the energy as the universe went into a lower energy state. Sure. So so so, so I think that Bitcoin is. Um, an expanding bubble, just like the uh, the the solid phase that expands around the uh, the seed crystal. So the idea is maybe at some point in the future there might be a a phase shift that um, goes from people recognize oh maybe BCH is the the coin going forward or something like that maybe. And there's a very rapid shift. Is that the idea you're thinking of? Well, I think that uh, there there is a, a phase change occurring in the, the world from the dollar to uh, Bitcoin. And by by Bitcoin, I mean in any any of any of the bitcoins. Uh, right. There there then there there are some other there are some other uh, cryptocurrencies that do do not derive from. Uh, the original Bitcoin seed crystal, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I, I don't think they have as much of a chance just because they got started later. So maybe we can 
put these these expanding bubbles are kind of like uh, competing ideas that are slowly uh, expanding over uh, the population. I, I think that they are literally competing ideas. In fact, they're not, right. they're not kind of like competing <laughs> ideas. I think that's that's what they literally are. Right. And it's kind of these competing ideas that people are, I guess, facing off in their minds. They're trying to um, figure out what's going to be the dominant uh, bubble in the future, or what's going to be the dominant idea, and um, it's kind of this competition within every person that has heard these ideas, and then one kind of wins uh, or another. And I think maybe a similar idea was that uh, ideas can almost be looked at as like organisms fighting each other. So there's kind of like a, a competition there. I think, yeah, and I think an even better analogy is to think of um, populations of organisms or, or, or genes within a population. Right. Um, but uh, I, th I think that the, um, uh, I, I think money, money is itself kind of a, uh, a positive feedback loop um, because uh, the, the, the reason the reason money is valuable is that everybody in society has been convinced to expect everybody else to uh, treat the money as valuable in the future right so there is there there is a um, positive feedback there that, that keeps it afloat and that's that's what makes it valuable and uh, Bit Bitcoin is like a, like the phase change from, from one form of money to another and if it is a, a stronger positive feedback than uh, it'll, in, in the previous month. It'll start to dominate perhaps. Yeah. Um, and I guess you start seeing that with uh, a lot of merchants accepting Bitcoin and it's just you know there's more of a loop you know the people inside of Bitcoin are going to try to use Bitcoin in more places that accept it and the more places that accept it um, the more people that use it and you just get that feedback loop over and over but um, perhaps it's even a more uh, dominating feedback loop because the idea is it's supposed to be global so now instead of going overseas and converting my money from USD to something else I can just take my Bitcoin wallet and use that yeah, once uh, creatures can get on land and start breathing oxygen, it's kind of like potential. If there is a potential for something to happen, it will happen. And if it's better than what was out there previously, it will uh, expand very rapidly to the point where it fills all possible space. Yeah, it, well, it will happen if there's a lot of random experimentation going on, which is... Uh, yes which is something that, but, that I like a lot. But I would say that, you know, currently um, the human brain is just basically doing tons of random experimentation all the time with ideas. Yeah. And that's why we have Bitcoin, because we have a million of these experimentations much faster than evolution could, um, happening all the time. And then one clicks, and then it just starts as a very small idea in someone's head. And then all of a sudden, what, 10 years later, uh, it's a worldwide phenomenon, and that's faster than that's ever taken place evolutionarily. Yeah, so. absolutely. And let's go. Let's go back to what we were saying about Bitcoin Cash attracting more creative people. Because what does that mean? That means more random experimentation, doesn't it? Yes, on top of uh, the protocol itself, right? So you have all these people, and they just have all these ideas. There is more creativity, more people trying out new things, right? I had, you know, memo.cash and uh, block press are just things that I don't think people thought was even possible, but um, someone created this little website, uh, a, you know, Twitter clone, and then all of a sudden it's being used a bunch now. And the, the ideas that, that make up your, your consciousness are, um, uh, um, our, our feedback loops and they don't have to they don't all have to be competing either they can be some of them can be cooperative but but some of them have to be in, in competition with one another right so is it the idea that expanding bubbles are 
feedback loops of ideas. Is Bitcoin, for instance, just a um, a feedback loop in itself that's kind of growing within the consciousness of of society? Yes, I actually think Bitcoin is is many feedback loops because uh, there are there are many ways to to profit with with Bitcoin, and and all of them are. Uh, feedback loops that that make make Bitcoin stronger it just gets bigger and bigger and more people get into it and then you tell your friends and then your friends get into it and yeah then, and, um, and yeah and the idea of Bitcoin is also a, a positive feedback loop well hopefully positive <laughs> it's, fe- it's it's a loop in in your brain and in in everybody's brain if you look at my my first video that I ever uploaded um, all, all I did was I aimed my webcam at the screen of my computer and uh, it is showing, we're, we're looking at the, uh, the output of, of the, the webcam. The, the webcam is, is looking at the, uh, the output of the webcam. Right, so it's like a feedback loop basically. Right, so I, come, I, I, I show all of these, these odd shapes that I can... Uh, uh, conjure up simply by by playing around with the webcam, and they are shapes that uh, are not not in, inherent in the real uh, uh, picture of of the world prior prior to the existence of of this feedback. I mean, in 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 a brain, you could have a uh, a sequence of, of neurons that goes from. The, the sensory apparatus directly to the uh, the the body or, or the the limbs, whatever whatever causes it to move, and then sure. it, then then the, the the animal or or robot or, or whatever is uh, kind of kind of like a it's just kind of running a program, and uh, the 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 sensory input is directly translated into some kind of uh, motion but there could also be a, a loop of neurons and uh, the, the the loop is self-reinforcing and and so I think this is interesting to think of like um, you know uh, Bitcoin split off into BTC and BCH so now you have two competing loops basically and whichever is the more is the stronger loop Whichever is the more positive feedback loop yeah. will be the one that slowly grows and eventually kind of takes over. Yeah, as, I agree. As the main, uh, the main idea, the main feedback loop, right there. But but I also think BTC and BCH are much more cooperative ideas than uh, Bitcoin versus any altcoin, because I think the altcoins are. Uh, Se- separate cur- currencies with uh, separate genesis blocks are all um, inherently rivalrous right. to one another. It'd be well, you know, it's interesting because it'd be hard to look into the two camps and say, "Oh, they're really harmonious." Because right now, uh, at least, it looks like there's a bunch of bickering back and forth between the two camps. But they are, you know, they are kind of brothers. They share a common. Uh, the Genesis block. Siblings fight a lot, but you know, lo- o- overall, you know, you know that siblings are more, more, more likely to to be cooperative than unrelated. Right, people. and I think um, I think that's that's true, and I think it's a lot of the people that are kind of soft spoken because everyone that held Bitcoin before the fork. Um, has an equal amount of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, or BTC and BCH, and I think they're the people that are holding both are basically the ones that are not really coming out and um, berating the other camp. They're the ones that are kind of quietly sitting in the back, perhaps. Agree, but but I think that they are they are following a very good strategy. Right. And yeah, so <laughs> so the bickering is what's very visible. The bickering but... is when someone's bought one or the other after the fork. And now they're trying to right. say, "Well, you know, I think it's the um, it's the people that are outspoken that really 
push projects or push push projects forward basically you know you have a bunch of you could have a bunch of indifferent people but the people that are really pushing for their project that are publicly speaking out there are the ones that are going to convince everyone else if um, that project should succeed or not yeah. so you know you have I think there's a bunch of different people you have very outspoken people people who are much more quiet for instance um, who are just kind of waiting and seeing um, but it's the people that are kind of you know waging on these battles I suppose that are uh, going to determine the outcomes well I, I actually <laughs> I actually disagree with that I think that the the powerful people are are the quiet ones because they're they're the ones that the outspoken people are talking to and they're they're the ones who have to be convinced so well I maybe it's a it's a combination of both you have to have the people that are trying to convince the the soft-spoken ones to change their Bitcoin or maybe become less soft-spoken well I, I don't know I think that the, the the people who are outspoken have to be on the side of you know which whichever has the better positive feedback loop and and being outspoken doesn't doesn't necessarily make their position any better correct I think um, well if you're on the, the wrong side and you're outspoken um, and you know it's it's obvious then you're gonna have to start making up um, kind of ridiculous claims and so at least that's what I kind of see on the BTC side a little bit is more of these claims of um, attacking uh, individuals or ad hominems more than um, saying why their technology is better and whatnot. Um, and you, you know, so comparing the two sides, at least BTC and BCH, I see more reasonable arguments in general on the BCH side from the people that are out succeeding in the long term. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that, and I would say that a, a reason for for this is. What, what we were talking about earlier about how the, the whole idea of, of BTC is that uh, most people kind of have to go along with the program and only a, a tiny fraction get to be the creative people. Uh, the, 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 major, the major part of the value of a cryptocurrency is the community and the, the software is the, the interface mm -hmm. by which the people in the community interact with one another. But the, the community is where where the value actually is. You, you, well, you have, you have to have positive feedback, right? Right. So uh, cre creativity is, is what is going to create that, uh, that positive feedback. That's, that's what's going to attract more people, right? Right. And I think maybe that's why we've seen a, a heavily increase in uh, Ethereum as well compared to uh, Bitcoin. Ethereum's kind of exploded in a way because of the creativity that it's it's had. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the um, the potential for for creativity is is valuable, and uh, that that certainly explains a lot of. Uh, Ethereum success. If if you have have an idea, at, at first maybe it starts out in only uh, a few neurons, and you're not consciously aware of it. But if, um, if it, it's a good enough feedback loop, then it starts to expand more and more. And yeah, and if if the other if the other ideas um, are not. Uh, able to sustain themselves as well. Eventually it becomes bigger in, in your brain. It's not a question of if, it's a question of kind of like the inception. If you, but if it has merit, if it has substance behind it, it's actually going to um, it's going to grow and expand and it's going to compete, right? It's going to be like two I like the, the metaphor of two organisms fighting, right? And the better one is going to win. And if this feedback loop, this small idea is inherently better. It can defeat uh, the other ideas. And Bitcoin Cash, I think, started as that, right? It was a small, tiny inkling by um, this one person on this form, form post, right? Yeah. And maybe it was seen by one or two people. It was just, hey, um, maybe Segwit 2x won't happen. 
maybe um, that that's gonna you know go under. Maybe we should uh, do a fork right here before um, Segwit um, goes into into place in BTC. Maybe we should just have this as a fallback. And it's a tiny, tiny little thing that started. Um, one little form post, and now it's a um, multi-billion dollar cryptocurrency. It's expanded immensely, this tiny little idea, so... Well, and the same, the same with Bitcoin itself, because that started that's right. out... It started out as a paper that almost nobody saw, and uh, eventually more and more people uh, got into it. So I think, that's a, I think that's a really good point, that if you have... If your um, community ecosystem has the possibilities for s the start of small ideas, and that is extremely powerful because, you know, a million people are going to try all these little ideas and someone's going to have a really good one. Ideas that can be cooperative with one another are, are a better form of experimentation because you can have more, more successful ideas if people know, Absolutely. if people know how to make ideas that can cooperate with right. one another. So here's, here's, yeah, I think that's an interesting point that if you have a crypto that accepts forks as a inherent good, as something that, oh, we can fork off a million times and whatever one's better will be the leading one and people are okay with that, then you're going to have a lot more experimentation, you're going to have a lot more things going right and you're going to be able to, um, come up with interesting and better solutions faster than other coins, for instance. So I think it was very detrimental that there was this huge um, split and all this animosity between the two forks. Cooperative ideas can expand more easily. So I think that uh, I, I, am, uh, I am foreseeing uh, expansion of the, um, the ideas that, that that we have just discussed. I think so, yeah. So so we'll see if we planted any seeds here. <laughs>